Hey there guys, I'm Sonicos and welcome back to some more Let's Play Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Last time we finished up Great Bay Temple, fighting the boss of the dungeon, and we also got ourselves double defense, now taking more damage and lasting a lot longer in the process. In this episode, we're starting off here in the Mountain Village as we gathered up all the frogs in Termina, so now we can go ahead and talk to them with Don Jero's mask here and see what happens. I've been waiting for you, Don Jero. Forgive me if I'm mistaken, but it looks like you lost a little weight. As you can see, Don Jero, the long winter has ended and spring has finally come to the mountains. Let us begin our course. The conducting was spectacular, and all of our members rose to the occasion. This is how deeply we were moved by your spectacular conducting. So deeply moved, they give you a piece of heart. So as a reminder here, there are five frogs totally you need for the concert. One here is always going to be located in Mountain Village when you make the area springtime for the feeding got. The other four are located as follows. One is in Clock Town. One is in Southern Swamp. One is in Woodfall Temple and one is in Great Bay Temple. So we could not have gotten this piece of heart until this point in the game. Now we collected all of the frogs and brought them back here to the mountain village, we got ourselves a new piece of heart. Let us do it again sometime. So now we're done with the frogs. We're done here in the mountains. There's nothing left in Snowhead for us to do. So now we finished up this area, Let's make our way back over to the Great Bay Coast and finish up Great Bay. Because there's one other thing we can do in Great Bay to fully be done with this area as well. So now we're back here in Great Bay. Let's go ahead and equip ourselves the Zor Mask. And we no longer need that Don Jero Mask, so give me something like the Hookshot in its place. We're going to go ahead and make our way over here to the coast. And notice how we have a torch over here that wasn't lit earlier, and now there's just a boat here as well. This is all new. We read the sign. This tells us that this is the Fisherman's Jumping Game. Please ride the boat to the Fisherman Island to inquire about playing. This boat will not appear here until you defeat Georg in Great Bay. So this boat only appears when you free the area of that said boss. So now we need to wait for this boat to go all the way around the area and get us over to where this tree is located. And would you look at that? There's someone there. Kind of took a minute for the draw distance to kind of load him into place, but yeah, the fisherman's there. That's the same guy we talked to earlier on our adventure to get the seahorse from. So we're going to just hookshot this tree. It's a little awkward to do because you're on a moving boat, so it's not the easiest shot. And let's go ahead and talk to him. Now that the seas are back to normal, I started a little business aimed at tourists. If you pay 20 rupees, I'll invite you to a jumping game that has a really big prize. You're up for it. Go to the island in the center. All right, sure thing. Oh, you're up for it. Now then, I'll explain the rules, so listen carefully. I'm going to light the torches on each of the surrounding four islands in a particular order. Jump to the island that has the lit torch, and if you can jump to it before the torch goes out, you'll get one point. If you get 20 or more points within the time limit, you'll get a big prize. It'll cost you 20 rupees for one try. <laughs> How about it? Will you give it a try? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Great. In that case, I'll start. So we have two minutes to get ourselves at least 20 torches. So what you can do is you can jump around just like so, and you can get yourself some torches. And the easiest way to do this is just use Z targeting to your advantage and just kind of flip the camera around to see where the torches are located. So this is how you can play the game. But there's another way. I won't be showing the other way though until we get this legit because this other way is technically a glitch. So I don't want to be breaking this game too badly. But one thing to mention is that this game isn't open 24-7. This game is only open from 7 to 4, so we kind of got here just in time, actually. This guy does take breaks, so luckily for us, we got here before his break started. So I'm going to jump over this torch, 
Now look around for the other one, which is on our right. Camera around, turn left. I recommend doing this game without the bunny hood because one thing I haven't mentioned is that if you do jump off, you will fail the game. It doesn't matter if you have 20 torches lit at that point, you will still fail. So be very careful where you jump because you don't want to jump on the water as you win. It's very easy to do and I've done it before. So there you go, that's 20 torches. So that's how you could play the game, but here's another way. In the N64 version, if you just mash the sword button on a ledge, Link progressively gets on and off the ledge at the same time, so he's constantly resetting the pattern. Right now we're getting it wrong a bunch of times, but notice how when we got it right, we got five torches in a row. Sometimes you can get a lot more than five. Sometimes you can get nine in a row. So if you want to do this game really easily in the N64 version, just get on the side of a ledge and just mash, just mash the sword button because you can just get a whole bunch of points all at once. It's a little luck based, but this will guarantee you to get 20 points at the very least because your luck of getting 20 with this is just very much in your favor. And it's a very easy game because of it. This is a huge cheese strategy that was fixed in the 3DS version as this glitch no longer works. In the N64 version, feel free to manipulate this to the best of your ability and get a new high score with it. Alright, that's it. Uh, that was a little too easy. Oh well, here's your prize. There we go, we got ourselves a piece of heart. That's two pieces of heart down. Two more and we got another heart container. I was thinking of saving up to buy a big ship. Now it looks like I may go bankrupt. Wow, sorry for cheesing your game that badly. I didn't know it was going to be that problematic if we took all your money, apparently. Or in this case, just a piece of heart, because he didn't give us money. But yeah, that's that. We're done with Great Bay at this point. This was our last thing we needed to do in the area. Now we have everything in the Great Bay area. So let's leave and go back over to Clock Town, because at this point, we're actually going to make our way over towards our next area we're supposed to be going to in the game. But we're not actually going to be starting the next set of story beats. We're mainly going over here because we want to activate an owl statue. That way we have a quick warp back. So we want to go ahead and make our way out from the east clock side entrance and make our way over to the canyons. We've already been over to the canyons a couple different times here in this playthrough, but at this point, we have all the necessary items to get into this area proper. So that's what we're going to be doing. But before doing so, I want to go ahead and use our hook shot here. Well, first I'm going to take you out because I don't want to get jinxed right now. Thank you very much. Take out my hook shot and there is a chest up here on this platform. Inside this chest is 20 rupees. So if you want 20 bucks, there you go. I don't know why I paused there. I think I was wanting to equip something like my Ocarina. I'm like, no, it's already on your C button. So I'm used to not having this on a C button in this game because of how many different things you use at once. Need a pony here so we can go ahead and jump over these fences. That was a nice kill. These bubbles don't stand a chance against a pony. You can't get jinx when you're on your horse, which is very nice convenient. But here is where we actually want to be. I don't want to get off and get jinxed. How did he jinx me on a pony? That's not supposed to happen. All right, uh. Wooden mouth on that one. Can't get jinx while on horse. Get jinx while on horse. Sure. Hello, sir. How are you doing this fine evening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing in a place like this? The Kana Hill beyond here is the place where spirits with troubled and lingering regrets wander. Even now, the spirits wander in search of one who can save them. It is unfortunate, but it is no place for one such as you. But if you must enter, then you must attain the mask containing wandering spirits that can be found near the ranch. Without that mask, you cannot save their souls. Until then, I will not let you pass by here. <laughs> A mask near the ranch, you say? Would it be Agaro's mask by chance? <laughs> That's a nice mask you're wearing. That is the mask of the leader of the ninjas who once spied on the hilltop castle with the blood-stained history. With that, 
you may be able to call out their spirits that even now is still wandering. Perhaps you may be able to save the souls that wander beyond here. <laughs> Spooky, he just fades out into existence after spawning a tree. How weird. So this mask, we haven't had any use for it all just yet, but the Garl's mask that we get from the Gorman Brothers is what gains you access here to the Akana Hills area. So we definitely needed this. I'm gonna be wearing my stone mask for now because I don't want to be attacked from any of these bubbles. Don't want to be jinxed again. Please ignore me. There's no one here but us rocks. All of us rock brethren and nobody else. Welcome to our next major area here in the game, Akanya Canyon. We're not going to be doing any story beat stuff here just yet, but up above is an owl statue that we're here to hit. But apparently, Tattle has something to say first. I can't see it, but I sense there's a thirst for blood looming all around us. Don't you have a mask that can summon the unseen? Well, if we're talking about unseen things, I have the lens of truth. I mean, I do have a mask for this thing, too, but will the lens work? No? Here the mask. Master, you called? What are you? More importantly, what are you? This here seems to be a Garrow. Just concentrate on blocking and dodging those sharp swords. Well, luckily for me, I do have a shield. And you just deflect the... Thank swords out of your hand. All right. Well, that was an easy battle. Urgh, incredible. Although my rival, you were spectacular. You were also stabbing me in the face. It's a good thing I'm already dead. And so take my bow by opening my heart and revealing my wisdom. Across the valley of Ikana, aim at the river beast with the arrowhead that freezes. Believe or disbelieve, rest with you. To die without leaving a corpse. This is the way of Oscaro. Well, that was weird. Easy guy to fight. All you gotta do is knock away the swords with your shield, and then the Garrows are just down in one hit. You kinda buttle across the canyon. Beware of Octorox. Uh, beware of small screens, too. Because that's a small screen. Um, can we just opt not to have this this time? I'm not gonna just... Advanced time. I, I kind of like to see things instead of having like 16p of pixels. Let's go to dawn the final day real quick. Ah, glorious 240p. That's better than no p. What do you have to say here, Stone? It seems the re-deads that appear in Akana Castle start dancing with the captain's hat Gibdo mask or Garo's mask are worn. But that does not change things much. Well, we have two of those three masks. I don't know about that last one, though. The, the Gibdo mask? What, what is this? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen one of those. But I have seen this trick. Freezing off the rocks. We did this back in Great Bay Temple, and this is how you're supposed to proceed. You freeze these two little suckers, use them as platforms, and now we can get over to where this tree's located and hookshot it. So now we can climb up this tree and get up to the top of Agana Canyon, which is very convenient for us if I can turn around. Once we get to the very top of this area, we will see ourselves an owl statue. So we want to hit this, and now we have an easy way back to this area whenever we want, which is going to be very helpful later on. We also see our friend Tingo here as well. So, you know what? Let's pay him a quick visit. There's not much I want to do in this area, but at this point in our adventure, we don't need to buy any more maps from Tingle, so I just want to say hi to the guy one last time, and then we never need to talk to him ever again. Insult injury. Can we shoot him down with the ice arrow? There we go. Shoot him down a nice flashy arrow type. I do like how the ice arrows look when you shoot them. Very nice looking. Hello, Tingle. How have you been? You have any maps for us here? So we can get the Stone Tower map, which is for the Akana area as a whole, and we already own it, or we can get the Clock Town map for 40 rupees. He sells this to you for five rupees in Clock Town. What's with the markup here, dude? 
There's a reason why we're no longer talking to you. Tingle, tingle, kolimba! That's the final time you need to hear that, because again, we are done. We have all of his maps. So there's no reason to ever talk to him for maps. At this point, that is it. But I did want to point out those are the maps he has. I don't know why you'd buy the Clock Town map here for 40. That's an insane price tag. Do not do that. Buy it at Clock Town. Don't buy it for a markup price here. What are you doing? It's a con's hideout, protected by impenetrable security. Me a giant boulder. I mean, I'll do the trick. Can't break that down. What is this? Wait, was he floating there for a second? I, I seen that. Can't hide that from me, game. It's probably just the weird camera. Who are you, though? You kind of look familiar, actually. I feel like we've seen him somewhere before. Well, he won't be talking to us, though, so, uh... Yeah, I guess we'll remember him for later, maybe? Would you look at this? It's a business scrub. Someone we definitely want to talk to. Thanks for stopping by. I'm doing business here in the canyon. You should give up going to the far side of the canyon. That place is cursed. If you don't have something that drives away demons, they'll catch you. Rumor has it, demons aren't afraid unless they see something that looks the same as themselves. Don't you need any blue potion in case you get cursed? One drink is 100 rupees. Well, I do have infinite magic right now, so I'm going to turn that down. Thank you very much. Oh, really? You'll be cursed. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take that risk. For now, let's go ahead and equip ourselves the Zora Mask and our final deed here, the Ocean Deed, and talk to him again. Thanks for stopping by. You're from the ocean, aren't you? I'm here to sell Blue Potion. Actually, I want to do business in the sea breeze while listening to the sound of the waves. But to open a business in our place, you need to go through the proper channels first. You know what I mean. Yes, I do. In fact, here's a deed for you. Oh, is that an ocean title deed? Let me have that. Please, if I have that, my dreams will come true. I'm not asking for it for free. I'll give you this. Really? Two and a rupees? Well, I mean, at least he said he wasn't going to give it free. He actually paid for the land. But I guess it's a fair trade. Oh, yeah. The net brown beauties are waiting. I don't think we should read too much into what he just said. That's some dated dialogue, if I say so myself. Let's just assume the guy is going to be enjoying his life now at the beach, relaxing and selling to the Zors in the area. Let's, uh, let's equip ourselves the Deku Mask and forget that ever happened. You paid us for the land, so that's 200 rupees if you want more money, but at this point, you're done now with all the deeds. That's the final Deku business scrub we talked to, and it leads us to another piece of heart. So we don't have to worry about collecting any more of the deeds anymore, which is great, because I have to do that every single cycle we enter a new area. It gets very time-consuming. Before we leave here, I do want to talk to this stone here and see what it has to say. The Fierce Deity Mask, a mask that contains the merits of all masks, seem to be somewhere in this world. That sounds like a really strong mask, but apparently we have no idea where it is. Okay, I'm gonna take a swim. Very slow swim, but hey, it does have a current, so we are moving forward. Okay, mistakes were made. I, I, why? I can't go back now. That's a one way. If you fall through that cave, you cannot go back the way you came. So, you get kicked out of a Connie Cannon in the Southern Swamp. I guess if you ever need something in Southern Swamp, that's a shortcut back here? Not a shortcut I recommend taking, but it, it is one that exists. So, one other thing I want to mention as we work way over to Clock Town, because there's one more thing I want to do before we end things. That blue potion that was being sold to us there for 100 rupees. That curse comment wasn't just business talk for the guy trying to sell you something. Blue potion, if you do drink that while cursed, will remove the curse from you, allowing you to use your sword once again. So, if you do get cursed, 
You can either use the Song of Storms or drink a blue potion to fix things, but if you have the Song of Storms, then no need to worry about blue potions. That it, It's just a free way to get rid of the curse at that point, so just do that. So, since we have a new transformation mask, we haven't been here yet with it. Treasure chest shop, one more time around. We got one more transformation to play here, so let's do it. Well, hello there, handsome. Want to play? Hey, for you, it's only five rupees. Wow, what a steal. Sure thing. You can make it all the way to the treasure chest and open it within the time limit. I'll give you a special prize. Finding out what's inside is half the fun. Are you ready? Hang on, let me just cheat real quick. Thank you, lady. I'm gonna just do this as Goron because it's always faster and easier. But I have really bad luck right now. I don't even know where I'm going. What the heck is going on? Cameron, please zoom out. This mini game is so zoomed in. Oh, we almost had it. Uh, can we go this way? Kind of. We go down a little bit. Oh, go around. Okay, maybe not. This game really doesn't let me go anywhere today. I got a really bad pattern here. We only have a few more seconds to work with. I'm about ready to start over. 15 seconds. Maybe we can get to this. It's going to be really tight. I still can't see anything. Still can't see. Still can't see. Still can't see. This is the worst part about this game. Vision. I almost found the path. I actually found the path as the game failed me. Are you serious? I am going to try again, but not as a go-on because of 30 rupees and I kind of want the Zora prize, please. Already a bad start. Dude, that was so close. We were literally right there. This is not the path. If I turn around, turn around more, turn around even more. Oh, this mini game, man. It's all luck. No way to really cheese this game. It's just let the faith guide you. All right, we got it. What's the Zora price? 20 rupees. So it's a 15 rupee net gained if you win this first try, but because we failed it twice technically, you know, spent 10 rupees to do this, we only got 10 rupees out of it. Not worth it, but we have mentioned all the other prizes up to this point, so yeah, there's another one. At this point, we're done here in the treasure chest shop. The only prize of importance is the Goron one, as everyone else's is either rupees or Deku Nuts if you're the Deku Scrub. So, there's no reason to play that at this point. We're done. So at this point, we're going to go back over to West Clock Town here. We're going to deposit our rupees. And we're going to go ahead and travel back in time. As at this point, we're done with this cycle. We need to start back over once again and prepare ourselves for our next area to traverse. But at this point, as we're depositing our rupees, making a total of 2,107 rupees in the bank. We're going to go ahead and end things here. Next time on Let's Play Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, we'll go ahead and do a couple things here around Clock Town, actually, before we make our way back over to Akane Canyon. I'll see you guys next time.